The mission that Jesus gave his followers, the sons and daughters of God, Christians, you and I are Redemption Church, and has been the mission for the last 2,000 years of church history, regardless of geography, culture, or the time in which people live, that we are to go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to observe all that, that Jesus commanded them and us. And behold, he'll be with us even to the end of the age. He's been doing that for 2,000 years, and he's doing that in 2020, uh, where it feels like the end of the age. And we have the uh, unique and special uh, opportunity to do that in new and fresh and compelling and faithful ways. And we announced last week that we will be gathering on September 13th, 10.30 a.m., uh, in live worship, one gathering, and we will continue to do that, rain or shine, unless we uh, get everything gets shut down kind of in a, a March version of, of quarantine or, you know, there's a hot spot outbreak in our church or something like that. But we're going to be here and you can be inviting your friends and your family and the people who are in uncertainty and where death t uh, numbers are thrown on our screens daily and we are regularly faced with our mortality. Uh, there are a lot of people who are thinking about God and, and sin and Jesus and eternal life. And we want to be a place in which they come and hear about Jesus in a compelling, loving way and uh, be a part of the disciple-making process. God bringing followers to, to His Son, Jesus Christ. Another way I want to talk about doing that is when it comes to our kids particularly our middle school and high school students who are in this very transitional season of life, formative. Think back in your middle school and high school years and how shaped you were just by the hormone changes and the life stage changes and all of the, the relational things happening. Sexual awakening was going on. Your academic future being planned. All in a culture like today. How difficult that would be, especially with the uncertainty of what school looks like. That we want to be for your family as Redemption Church leaders and uh, fellow members, a support of prayer, practical, tangible help in all of the appropriate ways so that your middle school and high school students are being discipled, that they're being taught the Word of God and ingrained in their life the truths of the scriptures, the, the, the great weighty doctrines of God that shape their worldview and give them a filter and a foundation that they can navigate whatever comes their way in the coming months and years ahead. I was thinking of Daniel chapter 1, and I'm going to read extended here a little bit as a, a way to encourage us and challenge us, that it was in the third year of King Jehoiakim's reign in Judah when King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon declared war on Jerusalem and besieged the city, and the master handed King Jehoiakim of Judah over to him. In the course of progressive history and revelation of God's people, that was a time in which they were removed from the land of Israel that God had given them. Their culture, what was familiar, where God was king, where the Bible was uh, supreme in their authority, and where their ways of following and worshiping and living before God were were uh, free, and then they were put into a culture in which they were then foreigners and exiles, and it seemed like they were under attack. Well, they were under attack physically and spiritually. Everything was uprooted and unfamiliar. Sound unfamiliar to what we're going through as Christians. We're exiles in a culture in the city of man uh, that is not always embracing our values, and we need to learn to live there and to exist there for the glory of God and make disciples toward the city of God. And, uh, and so they're experiencing that. And, and the king told the head of the palace staff to get some Israelites from the royal family and, and nobility, young men who were healthy and handsome, intelligent and well-educated, good prospects for leadership positions in the government, perfect specimens, and indoctrinate them in the Babylonian language and the lore of magic and, and fortune-telling. And the king then ordered that they be served from the same menu as the royal table. The best food, the finest wine. After three years of training, they would be given positions in the king's court. So they are to assimilate into the city of man. Get the, the best externally from man's viewpoint, 
not the heart, but externally get the best looking and most competent and gifted and skilled and charismatic youths that you can. These Jews were in all likelihood 15, 16, 17-year-old Israelites who had uh, been raised in an Israelite, God-fearing, God-loving, gr by grace alone, through faith alone, and God alone culture. And they're being ripped out of that and indoctrinated in the ways of a sinful culture. Young people, kids your age, middle school and high school student, kids, your, uh, people the age of, of your children, parents of Redemption Church. And look at how these young men respond. Don't tell me that 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 year old uh, young men and women cannot be deeply influential in deep meaningful ways in their culture for Jesus Christ. Four young men from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, were among those selected. But Daniel determined that he would not defile himself by eating the king's food or drinking his wine. So he asked the head of the palace staff to exempt him from the royal diet. The head of the palace staff, by God's grace, liked Daniel, but he warned him, I'm afraid of what the master will do. He's the one who assigned this diet. If he sees that you're not as healthy as the rest, he'll have my head. But Daniel appeared to a steward who had been assigned, appealed to a steward who had been assigned by the head of the palace staff to be in charge of Daniel and his, his uh, buddies there. Try us out for 10 days on a simple diet. Then compare us and make your decision to see who's best. The steward agreed. So the steward continued to exempt them from the royal menu of food and drink and serve them ve uh, only vegetables because after 10 days they looked better and more robust than all the others. And God gave these four young men knowledge and skill in both books and life. In addition, Daniel was gifted in understanding all sorts of visions and dreams, and at the end of the time set by the king of their training, the head of the royal staff brought them into Nebuchadnezzar, and when the king interviewed them, he found them far superior to all the other young men. None were a match for Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, and they took their place in the king's service. And whenever the king consulted them on anything, on books or on life, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and enchanters in his kingdom put together. So you've got a, a set of four folks, right, kids right there, who are 15, 16, 17 years old that didn't just automatically wake up and become men of character or women of character like those types of men. That took development. They had parents. They had spiritual leaders. They had time in the, the ways of God and in Scripture and in biblical community, deepening their souls so that they were able to go into a very difficult environment of uncertainty and unfamiliarity and live their lives in a way in which the non-believing culture looked and said they're far superior, not even close to the, the level of, of significance and influence and meaningful depth than these people of God. We want your middle school and high school students to have that as they roll into campuses this fall, especially in light of all the back and forth that's going to be happening. Uh, this is just a long way for me to tell you. Starting September 20th, weekly, youth group will be rolling out, rain or shine, every Sunday. Uh, Roy Chapman and Logan Tennell and Emily Tennell and Joe Deeds. And if you're interested in, in being a part of building men and women of character like we just read, then surface to us. Info at redemptionwv.com and we'll, we'll plug you into serving our middle school and high school students on Sunday nights and then periodically other events through the, through the fall starting September 20th. Keep your, your eyes peeled for our email and announcements to give us some of the details on on time and place, but uh, but that's coming. Uh, Roy's going to come back on and, and serve them well and serve our families well and your uh, students well, and we will be making disciples of them uh, just like every other age demographic in our church. Exciting time to be a Christian. Exciting time to be a part of Redemption Church. Love you guys. Let, let, uh, let us know if you have any questions or concerns or ways in which we can serve you well as we move into this fall launch, September 13th, worship gatherings, and then September 20th, Youth Group Weekly. Have a great weekend.